Steel and aluminum are the most commonly used metals in metal roofing, but today we're talking about specialty metals, copper, zinc, stainless steel, and expectations you should have if you're interested in one of those materials. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we're taking a look at specialty metals like copper, zinc, stainless steel, and a few other ones. And we're talking about what expectations you should have if you're interested in one of those for your roof. Um, we're talking about the differences between those and maybe some more standard metals like steel, uh, coated steel like galvalume, galvanized, or aluminum. Today to help me out, I've got Doug Markle from Sheffield Metals. Thanks, Doug, for being here. You bet. So can you start us off by explaining what some of these specialty metals are, uh, what we're going to be talking about today? As you mentioned in the intro, we're talking about items that are different than what a lot of the market is in standing sea metal roofing. Uh, we're talking about 16 and 20 ounce copper. We're talking about stainless steel, zinc products, and even bonderized or paint grip. And, you know, when we're talking about copper, something like that that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years has been used on roofs all over the world. And now we're seeing more steel and aluminum. You know, why might that be? I would say it's because while copper uh, obviously has been around for a very long time, uh, doesn't perforate in uh, adverse weather conditions, et cetera. It is a specialty metal. There are some issues uh, with its availability from time to time. The pricing on it fluctuates regardless of other market conditions. Uh, painted steel is more readily available, usually at a slightly lesser cost, and there's not as many variables involved uh, in handling 16 or 20 ounce copper. It's a softer material. It's surface critical, and there's a lot of care that goes into not only handling in it at the supplier level, but especially when you're manufacturing it into uh, a, a finished roofing product. Yeah, and some of the things you're saying apply to all of these metals that we're talking about today. Um, there's some patterns here that, that you know, we'll be talking about a lot. So let's first discuss uh, the availability of some of these metals. As I mentioned, steel and aluminum, most commonly used in the metal roofing world today. What about some of these other metals? What's their availability like? How easy are they to get and source and find someone to install? Right now, in today's current market, they're harder to come by. Uh, a lot of these materials can be imported, and you bring in logistics and supply chain issues with getting them over here. Steel is more readily available, although we are coming out of a steel allocation situation. It's more read readily available uh, right now, and it's, it's a more widely used product. And I, you know, when you're talking about supply chain, then you have extended lead times that come into play, possible delays, freight issues. Uh, and a lot of these products, you know, companies might not stock on a regular basis like they might steel or aluminum. So if you're purchasing something from a manufacturer or supplier, you might have to wait. For sure. There are, there are many more suppliers of uh, galvalume steel or painted galvalume steel or painted aluminum products than there are these specialty metals. And a lot of these projects, especially residential ones, lead time is critical on it. And so it's a more widely used product because it's more widely available. And, you know, one of the things that we talk about with homeowners and building owners all the time is how to find a good, reputable contractor to install their product. And when you're talking about steel or aluminum, that is still sometimes a difficult thing to do at the level and quality that you want. When you bring in these other specialty metals, what other challenges, you know, are part of that process too? There's a number of challenges in using these specialty metals. Uh, starts out with certain types of underlayment have to be used at the beginning of the project. You have to keep in mind the accessories that you're going to use, uh, your clips, your fasteners, etc. cetera, uh, have to be materials that are compatible with those substrates. It's very important to find an educated, experienced contractor that has worked with these products extensively so that they know what needs to be used where so that you get a proper installation. And what about the cost of these materials? 
I mean, obviously with the supply chain and them being a specialty product, not standard, that automatically drives up the cost. But what about the material themselves? How do they compare to steel or aluminum? They're definitely more expensive. The markets on those seem to fluctuate. Uh, from time to time, steel is, is more of a consistently priced item over an extended period of time. Uh, copper pricing can fluctuate almost week by week. Uh, and that's the same case with some of these other specialty metals. So uh, there is some volatility in trying to price things, trying to price these items out. When we're discussing stainless steel, copper, zinc, one of the pros of these materials is they last a long time. Can you talk to us about that? As we mentioned at the the beginning of our conversation, copper, for instance, has been a a roofing product. It's been around for centuries. Uh, It is going to patina and weather, but it does perform well in adverse weather conditions. It doesn't perforate and it does last a long time. The same can be said for zinc. Stainless steel, we see more in internal, maybe some internal wall applications and things like that. Uh, but it is, we're starting to see some interest in it as a standing seam product. So that's definitely one of the benefits. We're talking about a, a lifetime roofing system if manufactured and installed properly. So do these products come with warranties? There are some limited warranties out there on some of those products. Uh, if we're talking a bare copper product, there's not a substrate warranty out there, but some suppliers do also offer coated copper products that do have limited warranties on them. Zinc also has uh, some limited warranties available with it as well. Uh, Stainless steel does not have any warranty on it on the substrate, but it's still a product that's going to work and last for a long time if handled and installed properly. It's always best to check with your roofing contractor and the supplier to get the most current up-to-date information regarding available warranties on those products. And speaking of suppliers, if steel and aluminum are standard products that uh, suppliers might get engineering on, do some of these products have, these specialty products have engineering as well? Do some manufacturers carry that? What's that like? That would be another thing to check with your contractor and your supplier on. The good thing about using some of these specialty products is they're all compatible with today's portable roll forming equipment. But as far as testing and engineering, that's going to be up to specific suppliers on whether they invested the time and money into actually testing those products for weather type warranty applications, et cetera. Now, I imagine if someone is interested in one of these specialty metals, they, you know, it's either for the look, it's for the longevity that they provide. So I think it's really important for someone to take a look at at why they're interested in this product because we're talking about coated steel and aluminum painted products. There are some paint finishes out there that look similar to what some of these other specialty metals offer. Can you talk to us about that? So a lot of suppliers have moved to unique paint finishes to mimic some of these specialty metals. There's a, a lot of paint finishes out there that look like a patinaed copper, even a weathered steel like a core 10, for instance, which we haven't talked about, but the benefit to using those is they're typically at a fraction of the cost of the specialty metals because they're a coated steel or a coated aluminum product. They do are typically covered under those suppliers finish warranties as well. So you get that look of a weathered specialty metal, but you're also covered under a warranty and there's usually a cost savings involved as well. We've talked a lot about the challenges that come with being interested in a specialty metal and the the considerations there. So who are these products for? Who would be a good fit for some of these products? We see a lot of these products in the residential realm. Like I said, uh, we do see them as standing seam roof systems, but more often than not, we're talking on custom built home projects. Uh, used as as wall accents or certain sections, a patio covering or a porch covering or a small section of a roof that's going to blend in with uh, a standing seam roof or even a tile uh, or slate or stone-coated steel roofing system as well. What's your advice for someone if, if they are interested in one of these products? 
what do they have to keep in mind, you know, when they're putting in their order or they're talking to a contractor? Be patient, do some research first, see what type of specialty metal is, is going to best be used wherever your project is located. Find a reputable reefing contractor that's worked with these products in the past. They can help you navigate that whole process as well. You want to make sure that you're using all the applicable accessories for that system and following specific installation details that are designed for those systems as well to, to maximize the benefit of using that product, whether it's for a, a full roofing system or, or whether it's just for an accent piece. All right, Doug, well, thank you very much for the information that you shared. I hope you learned a lot about specialty metals and the things that you can expect if you're interested in one of those products for your home or building. If you have any questions, please comment down below. We'd love to answer them. As always, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.